It's Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. A lot to talk about today. Please make sure to like, uh, share, and subscribe. I'm going to get right into this video. Markets have closed. Uh, markets finish in the red, except the Dow. The Dow did finish in the green. Although it was up uh, earlier today around 250 points, finished up 63, NASDAQ down 19, the 10 year bond yield at 4.66% as I make this video. Uh, gold up another $24, sitting at 24.07 as I make this video. Silver pulled back 42 cents, sitting at 28.29. Jerome Powell came out uh, earlier today and he warned that rates need to remain higher for longer. I'm really shocked that the markets did not get crushed today. Now, markets across the board in the red except for the Dow, but it could have really, it should have been bad. Why did the Dow Jones close up 63 uh, in the green getting this news from Jerome Powell? They are priming you all and warning you right now that don't expect rate cuts this year. Maybe one. Now, now today they're talking maybe one. So we've gone from six or seven to three or four, to two to three, now maybe one. Uh, I think there's probably a, a higher chance that we're gonna get a rate hike this year than a rate cut. Um, but it, it, it is shocking with Jerome Powell coming out today that they're gonna keep rates higher for longer uh, and, and the Dow Jones closes up 63. Interesting. Uh, the hedge today, financial forecasts 2025 to 2032 Please don't be naive. If you get a minute, uh, check out this article. Um, in this article, and just to kind of paraphrase a little bit, it was talking about, you know, there's a lot of people out there saying that, you, you know, when things collapse, they're going to go out and buy houses, and cars, and boats, and land, and everything's going to be on sale. And these people with money are just going to eat it all up. They're, they're going to acquire all this wealth. But, you know, there's a lot of wealth out there, people that think they're wealthy because they're rich on paper, they're wealthy on paper. When these markets go, it is going to destroy all of this paper wealth. And these same people who believe that they're going to capitalize on this crash uh, have no idea uh, what is going to happen to them. Throughout history, uh, you can go back to the Roman days and the collapse uh, of, the, of the Roman financial system. Uh, you can even go back to the Great Depression. There were a lot of wealthy people who got wiped out. And if you are heavily invested in paper, in these markets, in bonds, uh, in the stock market, and you're wealthy on paper, maybe you own real estate right now and it's gone way up, and you think you're wealthy because the price uh, of some real estate has gone up, when this market turns, when this super bubble collapses, this wealth is going to be wiped out. The wealth that's going to count is the wealth that you're holding in your hands. Could be dollar bills, could be gold, it could be silver, it could be you know, it could be real assets. But people who think they're wealthy because they're looking at some digits on on their computer or on a piece of paper and they think they're wealthy because of that, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. The wealth is going to come from the people who are holding real physical assets. And you know, as you watch my videos, um, you can dislike what I say. And there was a great example uh, in this article of the people on the Titanic who didn't like the news that the ship was sinking. Even though they didn't like the news, it didn't change the outcome. So like this video, which is not going to be very positive, it's just going to be reality. And I know a lot of people have a, a difficult time um, being able to comprehend reality because they live in a very fake world or a bubble. They, they're they're uh, very... Uh, it's very hard for them to uh, break down reality and face the truth and face the data or the facts because it's scary. It is scary for a lot of people because they're unprepared. But this is the reality. The ship is sinking right now. And so whether you like the news or you don't, it's not going to change the outcome. I know that there's a lot of people that love to go, oh, it's more doom and gloom. I'm just talking reality. Tell me where I'm wrong. I'm pulling up these articles from uh, you know, a dozen different sources uh, on, on, on the mainstream. Tell me where I'm wrong. This is reality, and I'm sorry for the people who cannot handle it. I'm sorry for the people it scares, who it scares. If it does scare you, you should take action and protect yourself. Um, but again, the ship is sinking, and it is not going to change the outcome whether you like it or not. Fact, the debt has funded the expansion 
of production and consumption. The mountain of debt is much bigger than anything we have actually produced. Think about all the money that this country has spent over the last two decades on wars uh, and sending money over to other countries to create more wars, all the military bases, uh, all, all this money that we send over to ma manipulate half the world. What have we really gotten from it? What have we really produced except more debt? Uh, the everything bubble now that all this debt has created, which has produced really nothing but more war, uh, we're, it's not going away. It's going to get bigger. It will blow up, and it is going to collapse the U.S. economy. And so uh, whether you like it or not, uh, your opinion is not going to change the outcome of what has begun. We have created a disaster with all this debt. What are we adding? A trillion dollars every 90 days to the U.S. debt? And you think that there's going to be no uh, repercussions from this? You think this is good for the U.S. economy? You think this is good for our purchasing power? You think this is good for our standard of living? You think this is normal for a country to be adding a trillion dollars every 90 days uh, to their debt? This is alarming. It is scary what they're doing. This is why the price of gasoline could soon double, theeconomiccollapse.com. Yesterday, uh, I paid $5.19 for a gallon of regular at Arco. National average, $3.63. Market Watch warns that gasoline could hit $5.40 this summer. And if Israel and Iran begin just trading missiles back and forth, you're going to see oil go to $125 to probably $150 a barrel, and you will see $6, $7, $8 gasoline in America. And it can happen very, very quickly. And think about what most people would do in, in, in this situation if they were paying 6 or $7 for a gallon of gas. And what is that going to do to the cost of everything at the grocery store, everything sitting on a shelf at a Walmart? What do you think it's going to do? It's going to be extremely inflationary. And speaking of inflation, if the Fed has any thought of even cutting rates this year, which I don't think they really do or can, think about the inflation that that's going to cause. Uh, they're stuck. And we're in big trouble uh, as a nation. This economy is in very, very big trouble. I'm, I'm looking at houses today uh, in the South, and so many of these houses are getting so stale. They've been on the market for so long, and they're so overpriced. That's why they're, they're sitting there. But it seems, at least in the southern part of where I'm looking, uh, sellers still have not digested exactly what is happening. They still think it's you know 2021, 2022. Those days are long over. Uh, and these properties are going to continue to sit because I looked at uh, bankrate.com today. We're looking at a 30-year fixed rate at 7.13%. You know, if you have 20% down, excellent credit, you can get 7.13%. If you don't, uh, you're probably paying closer to 8% now for a 30-year. Politico, a tax mystery. Why are fewer people getting refunds? Uh, if it seems like you're not getting a tax refund like you used to, you're not alone, it says. At the same time, the number of people having to cut a check to the government has been rising. Refunds are down 3.3% so far this year. Uh, before the health crisis, about 75% uh, of filers got refunds. Now it's about 65%. So 10% less. That, that's amazing. And think about how many people depend on that money to pay down the credit cards, to uh, pay down some debt, to uh, buy, you know, buy, help buy a new car, repair the house, uh, put in the savings account. They're not getting that money. Um, it, this is really getting out of control. Best Buy cuts workforce, including Geek Squad, looks to AI for customer service. It says here, home theater uh, repair techs and phone support specialists were impacted the most. Not giving a number of how many people they're actually uh, cutting, but that was in USA Today. Here's another one from The Hedge. Illegal uh, immigrants cost American households hundreds of billions of dollars annually. Newsweek says the true cost could be uh, nearing $150 billion per year, uh, and it's costing your household over $1,000 a year. I think it's probably actually more than that, but this is where some of your tax money is going to take care of all the, the newcomers. Um, how do you feel that you're you know, having to pay an extra $100 a month plus 
to take care of people from all over the world coming right here. I'd love to know your comments. Comment down below. Uh, do you have an extra $100 a month to just shell out uh, to people from all over the world coming here to make sure that they're you know, getting debit cards and healthcare and food? How do you feel about that? Uh, I, I certainly really am not comfortable giving any money to people I don't know uh, who are coming here and not doing it the legal way. Here's another one from The Hedge today. Brink Brink of unrest. Migrants flood New York City City Hall uh, in protest of losing luxury hotel rooms. Hundreds of migrants migrants uh, are demanding that they get their hotel rooms back. Yesterday, uh, we saw the Free Palestine Free Palestine supporters charge the fence next to the Brooklyn Bridge and storm the bridge. So we had that going on. We had the um, San Francisco. Uh, bridge uh, shut down. O'Hare Airport routes to uh, O'Hare Airport were shut down. People couldn't get to the airport. They couldn't make their flights. Uh, so all this uh, unrest is taking place. And on top of it, uh, now you, you know you've got hundreds of these newcomers. I know people hate when I use that. Um, we got all these newcomers now wanting their luxury hotel rooms back. And by the way, uh, yesterday. Um, at that bridge, many uh, of these uh, pro-Palestine -Pal uh, supporters got in physical altercations with NYPD. Uh, you know, just seeing the movie Civil Unrest a, a few nights ago, horrible movie, by the way, but it did make you think when you visually saw what was happening uh, in some of the cities, uh, people, you know, that were, you know, living in tents at these, um, uh, areas uh, during all the fighting um, and you you saw tracer rounds flying over and Apache helicopters and you know, you saw all this violence taking place um, this to me is is <laughs> more shocking um, and obviously much more realistic because it's actually really happening and I'm watching these videos today of these people fighting with the police um, shutting down bridges, the San Francisco, what is it, the San Francisco Bay Bridge, uh, O'Hara Airport, all this. This is happening in real time. It's happening right now in the real world. But as I'm watching all this take place, you think about what happens when the free meal stop, what happens when the hotel room stop, when the free money stops, when these people can't get jobs, what is going to happen? What is the outcome of all of this? If these people right now are causing all this unrest, what is the outcome? And then, of course, you have people, you know, who are taking sides of this war in the Middle East and they're, you know, getting in altercations with the police and shutting down roads and bridges. So you have all these different people from all over the world protesting, you know, wanting their money, wanting their hotel rooms. Um, very, very dangerous. So... You can, you know, you can pay twenty dollars to go see the movie Civil Unrest, which I would probably say is a waste of your money. Or you can watch these videos. You can Google these videos and see what it looks like in real life, and start asking the questions: What if? What happens when these people don't get money? Don't get their way? Uh, don't get their hotel rooms? What's going to happen? And as things escalate in the Middle East, what's going to be the blowback? What are going to be the the repercussions right here? where a lot of those people from the Middle East are here right now, uh, legally or illegally, what is going to be the ramifications here as things escalate in the Middle East? Dozens of migrants rush past California beachgoers as, as speedboat suddenly washes ashore in wild video. I watched this video this morning. This happened on Saturday. A speedboat with, with dozens of newcomers. This boat had an engine. It drives right into Carlsbad, right, right onto a beach in Carlsbad, California. Multi-million dollar homes right there. Dozens of people jump out of the boat and run through the sand towards the million dollar homes. And many of them ran into a big uh, SUV. Who knows who was driving it? Who paid for it? A bunch of uh, people got into that SUV and took off. The rest of them were just scattered through the neighborhood of these multi-million dollar homes. This is um, concerning because we saw how the whole thing started in Israel where they ran motorbikes 
right into right into Israel and then took the lives of over what, over a thousand people. What if these people were armed and just got off this boat and they were armed and they were here to do really bad things? And what would happen to those beachgoers? Would we finally do something about all this? But think about how vulnerable people are just sitting out there at the beach having a nice day. Could you imagine if dozens of people just came out with weapons right out of this boat and just started unleashing? This could happen. This is how things happen. And people ha would have no way to protect themselves. They would be sitting ducks. And we are just asking for trouble by allowing this type of behavior to take place. These people are gone. They're gone. They're running past the lifeguards. They're gone. We have no idea where they're from, who they are, how, who, who, who sent them here, what their intentions are, nothing. And that should scare every one of you. Uh, here's another one. Speaker Johnson to send $96 billion to Israel, Taiwan, Ukraine, funding package to House floor on Friday. Where is the money coming from? Whether you're on the right, the left, in the middle, I just have one question. Where is this $96 billion coming from that we obviously can send to other places, but we cannot help the homeless in downtown LA. Uh, we cannot help our infrastructure. We cannot help our vets who are sleeping on sidewalks. We cannot help people who are food insecure in this country. Um, we cannot help small business owners who are losing their businesses. The school system is, is be, being absolutely destroyed in, in this uh, country. Our education is is collapsing. We can't help that. Um, we're now, you know, closing up hospitals in rural America because they can't afford to keep the lights on. We can't help them, but for some reason, we can we can take ninety six billion dollars wherever that money's coming from. Are we borrowing it from China? Are we printing it, or are we going to take it out of your tax money? We can come up with ninety six billion dollars and send it everywhere else except right here where it needs to be. That is, to me, absolutely disgusting. This country comes first, in my opinion. And if, if we cannot help ourselves, there's no way we can help the rest of the world. We are a bankrupt nation, and we are talking nearly a, another $100 billion like it's fairy dust. This is insanity, ladies and gentlemen. We are broke, we are bankrupt, and we are still writing checks for $100 billion while this country is collapsing financially, uh, physically, spiritually, this country is collapsing and we keep just taking money and sending it everywhere else and then we don't think about how we're going to pay it back because these countries are never going to pay us back. Here's another one today. Young men, uh, excuse me, young men uh, blowing their money like never before. Uh, this was an interesting article. I saw it uh, on, on the Drudge Report today. Legal sports betting hit a record $119.8 billion in 2023. So, you have uh, young men, young people spending a lot of money gambling on sports. On top of that, Robinhood and other free trading apps have suckered people into gambling in these markets. Uh, you have more people investing for fun, just gambling. It's not even investing. It is now gambling. People doing this because they have, they have a lot of time on their hands. Uh, people uh, are, are day trading, very risky. Uh, they're piling into meme stocks, investing in crypto. All this uh, is a casino, and it's very, very risky behavior. And it, it's just amazing. Um, and then yet these people will say, I don't have any money for gold or to have silver or to have emergency food. I don't have any money to go get trained in self-defense. Oh, jujitsu, I can't afford that. I can't afford my boxing classes because, well, because you're, you're buying meme stocks and cryptos, you're gambling on your Robinhood account, you're gambling on a baseball team. And yet these are the same people uh, every day who will complain that they don't have any money, but yet they still find a way to pay $8 for a Starbucks coffee. Absolutely shocking. But this is the mentality today that we have, especially with young people who are highly addicted to pharmaceuticals, um, uh, uh, very obese and out of shape, uh, mentally weak. Uh, it's easy to sit at home on one of these and gamble on Robin Hood or gamble on a game uh, and just sit on the couch all day. 
instead of actually getting out there, getting in shape, exercising your mind, your spirit, your body, um, having some dedication, setting out goals and sticking with it and becoming, you know, a, a, a uh, tougher person. Uh, and, and, you know, to me, successful people are, are the people who are dedicated, who set out, set a goal to do something and don't quit. I know too many people who've started something and quit because they didn't, they didn't, like the way it made them feel insecure, you know, jujitsu being one of them, uh, you'll find out like how, how tough people are, um, what kind of intensity they can really handle when, you know, somebody is trying to choke them out or rip their arm off or when somebody's punching them, you'll find out how intense, how intense they really, really, truly are. A lot of people start something and they never finish it. And to me, that is very, very weak minded. What's going to happen in the real world when you need to defend yourself? What, what does that really teach you when you quit in, in the business world or just day to day life that, you know, you started something and then you just quit because, you know, it was too painful. Uh, you know, you weren't the alpha in your workout class. You weren't as tough as you thought you were. Um, what does that teach you in life? Uh, to me, you just, that's just a quitter mentality. And if you quit like doing that, what else will you quit at? So, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, act like tough guys or people who say they're walking the walk, but are they really that tough? Are they really walking the walk? Um, you know, if you can't survive uh, three or four days in a jujitsu class, then I don't think you're really that tough. And I'm not saying I'm a tough person, but what I am is a very dedicated person. When I start something, I stick with it. I will set a goal that, hey, I'm going to do this for at least six months, or I'm going to do this for at least a year, or I'm going to do this for as long as, I, you know, for two years, whatever. But I'm not going to quit after a week or after a month or after two months. You've got to, you got to stay dedicated. If you want to get good at something, it may not be always fun. It might not always be comfortable, but this is the time to really get in uncomfortable places. This is the time to deal with some pain, some adversity to prepare for what is coming. And if you do jujitsu or Muay Thai, or you're doing boxing or wrestling, you understand pain. You understand that, um, the dedication that it takes. Uh, that you know you have to be resilient to pain and you have to figure out how to overcome it and work through it uh, that to me is intensity and if you want real intensity have somebody on the other side who is trying to hurt you that is much more intense than lifting weights in my opinion yeah it's great you can lift weights uh, you should be intense at the gym but what are you going to do when somebody's trying to smash your head in? What are you going to do if somebody's trying to take your life? What, is, what are you going to do if somebody's trying to hurt your kid or your wife? Um, then you better bring the intensity on. And I hope that you have some training because we're all going to resort back to training uh, during a situation. And most people re will resort back to nothing. And you know, if all you do is work out at the gym, what kind of training are you going to resort back to if you have to get into a combative situation? And not every situation means that you're going to draw a weapon out and take some Somebody's life. Um, if somebody was under the influence of something and, you know, maybe got pushy with you and, and, you know, you walk away, of course, but what if you can't do that? Um, you certainly, that, that is not maybe life threatening. Uh, it doesn't, uh, to me mean that you need to use lethal force. Most times you don't need to use lethal force, but what if somebody's not going to allow you to get back in your car? What if somebody is, is not going to allow you to avoid confrontation? What are you going to do about it? What would you do in that situation? You're on a subway and you know, somebody is looking for a problem that you cannot avoid. You're not going to pick up a dumbbell and defend yourself with that. You're going to have to have a skill set. And so I know a lot of people don't like hearing this because they want to sit on the couch all day. Uh, they don't want to feel uncomfortable. Uh, but you need to hear this because we're going to see more. <laughs> Look, there are millions of people from all over the world here. We have already millions of our own criminals here right now. We have, what, 2 million people in prison. We, we were letting out a lot of people. Uh, we have a lot of crime on our streets, and we're importing a lot more from all over the world. And to think that you're going to go through life and never have to deal uh, with a situation or a confrontation. I, I hope you never do. I hope you can avoid it, walk away. But what if you can't? And I'm going to close with this last article on CNBC. Uh, this morning at 445, Newport Beach. If anybody's in Newport Beach, uh, you should be heading up to Newport Coast. And we need to hear about this story. Get us some video. Uh, get up there to Newport Beach. This is what should be reported. One intruder shot by resident Newport Beach home invasion. This happened up in Newport Coast.
445 this morning. They believe that this family was targeted. This house was probably six, 7,000 square feet, multi-million dollar home. If this can happen in Newport Beach, up in Newport Coast, it can happen to anybody in the United States of America. This is one of the safest areas in America. Uh, this is a gated community, extremely wealthy, yet two individuals found their way into this house. Fortunately, the homeowner or somebody in that home was able to defend themselves. Um, got the first one, he's in the hospital. The second one they found out in the bushes somewhere, uh, self-inflicted wound to his head, now, we don't know if he purposely did that or accidentally did that, but one is deceased, the other one in the hospital. This could have been extremely bad for this family. Four people were in that home this morning, but uh, somebody in that home said, not going to happen to me. I'm the hardest person in the room to kill. You came to the wrong house. So good for him. His family is safe. And the bad guys, one down, one in the hospital, uh, in big, big trouble. But uh, obviously, this person was not playing around. This person was ready. But if, again, I, I bring this up because if this can happen up in Newport Coast and Newport Beach, California, this can happen anywhere in the United States of America. And this dude had to use lethal force, no doubt about it. Uh, the one individual, um, actually both individuals, I believe both were armed. Uh, so uh, this could have been really, really, really bad. But that man, I mean, I can't even imagine uh, what the neighbors were even thinking. I mean, we're talking multi-million dollar homes here, and uh, they had the SWAT team there. They didn't know if anybody there, there was anybody else in the house, so they searched the house. Uh, it, what a situation in Newport Beach. Very unheard of out there. But again, it's a warning to all of us that you just never know. 4.45 in the morning? How many people are even thinking, are even conscious at 4.45 in the morning? Um, but this dude, this dude handled his business. So um, uh, it's a word, uh, a word to the wise. Always be ready. Be the toughest person in the room to kill. And uh, again, this, this uh, required lethal force, unfortunately. But uh, look, be working, be training on your, your boxing, your jiu-jitsu, make sure you're at the range, always be ready. Uh, there's bad people out there. And these people, they're saying now we're targeted. So we don't know who was targeting them. Was it you know somebody else in the neighborhood that was working there? Uh, sometimes you never know, I'm not pointing fingers, but you know, sometimes the landscapers know what's going on. Maybe they you know knew that these people had you know had a lot of money or saw something that they wanted and told somebody, maybe it was friends of a friend, uh, you know, that knew something that these people might have had and and you, you just don't know. Um, but what we do know is uh, one person lost their life, one is in the hospital, and the family is safe. And if I hear any more about it, I will let you know. But be safe out there. Situational awareness, whether you're outside of the house or inside your house, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Bring the intensity uh, every day to life, ladies and gentlemen. You never know when you're going to have to use it, but make sure you have the training. Intensity is worthless if you don't have the training. Let me repeat intensity is worthless if you don't have the training. Make sure you're training uh, with all your combative skills, hand to hand. Knife training is fantastic. Um, and of course, make sure you're at the range in case things go nuclear. Uh, be safe. God bless. Comment down below. Want to know what you're thinking today. Uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. God bless all of you. And as always, I look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Take care.